Number 11, we're approaching infinity of this function at negative natural log of x over x to the fourth plus 1. So if we plug infinity into this function, let's see what happens. Now, this time I am keeping the plus 1, and it'll make sense here in a minute. All right, so the natural log of infinity, we said, is approaching infinity just very slowly. So we're talking about a not super big number divided by infinity to the fourth, which is a massively huge number. So when we divide a small number by a much, much larger number, what is the result? Okay, not exactly zero, but it is headed towards zero. Okay, that result, it's gonna be a very, 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 very small number. So essentially we can consider that zero. So this part is essentially zero. So we've got zero plus one, which means that the limit of this function is one. Now if you graph it, and you looked at it, and you zoomed out to the right, then you would see that it is one, okay? Uh, this function is not defined for negative infinity because we can't take the natural log of a negative number, so we can't talk about that limit uh, as we approach negative infinity. We can only talk about it as we approach positive infinity. Okay, let's look at our e to the x here. Okay e to the x. So when we plug in infinity here, we have negative e to the negative 3 times infinity. And again, I'm going to keep that minus 1. Now, negative 3 times infinity is going to give us a bigger negative infinity. There are a couple of ways of looking at this. Okay? Either we can say, okay, e to the negative infinity, if we go this way, where is our e function headed? What about is it headed towards zero? Okay, so we can say that first part is equal to zero for that reason. So our um, limit here is equal to negative one. Or if you prefer a little bit more algebraic manipulation, negative exponents. We move to the denominator to get rid of the negative exponent. So negative e to the negative infinity is equivalent to negative 1 over e to the infinity. Well, e to the infinity is infinity. It's going on super, super fast. So 1 over infinity is 0. So we come to the same conclusion. It just kind of depends on, on which perspective you want to take on it. Do you want to... <clears throat> Just think about going to the left of your e function, or does that negative infinity, you don't like that, move it to the bottom, and then just think about going to the right on e to the x. Either way, you should can't come to the same conclusion of 0 minus 1, so that limit is negative 1. Okay. Okay, because the trig ones can be kind of tricky. I'm going to leave 13 and 14 for you guys to think about, and then uh, I'm going to go over 15 through 18 so we can talk about these trig functions. All right, so um, the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine of 2x. Cosine of 2x. Now, we can plug, plug in infinity like we've been doing, okay? But when we do that, Think about the cosine function for a second. What is cosine doing? It's repeating the same pattern over and over and over and over again. So the cosine of 2 times infinity, as we go to the right there, it's not headed towards one specific value. It's bouncing between the values of negative 1 and positive 1. So this limit does not exist because... Uh, the function oscillates. Yes, ma'am. It does. Yes, you'll see here in 17 and 18 a different scenario here. Function oscillates between uh, negative 1 and 1. It's just bouncing back and forth.
Okay. Hmm? How did I know that? Because I know what cosine of 2x does. Okay, cosine of 2x is uh, it's just doing this over and over and over and over again. It never changes. It's just bouncing between those. So as we go to the right, it's not headed towards one specific function. Okay, let's look at 16. We've got the limit as we approach negative infinity of x. So I'm going to plug in negative infinity for x over the cosine of negative 3 times negative infinity. So we've got a really big number on top, negative infinity, over the cosine of 3 times infinity. So let's go back to what we just talked about. This is just 3 times infinity. towards one specific value, so this one does not exist as well because it oscillates. Now, there's something different about the cosines in 17 and 18. They are no longer the cosine of 2 times x. They're the cosine of 1 over x. They're the cosine of 1 over x. So let's see what happens here. When we plug in for this one, positive infinity, that negative, always move it to the numerator, okay? Always move it to the numerator. You don't distribute it to both the numerator and the denominator because then it cancels itself out. Um, so always just slide it up to the numerator. All right, so this time we've got negative 2 times infinity over the cosine of 1 over infinity. Well, let's zoom in here for a second. What is 1 over infinity? Zero. One divided by a massively huge number is essentially zero. So what's the cosine of zero? One. So we've got negative two times infinity over one. Guess what? That means that limit is headed towards negative. So 18, see if you can apply that logic to number 18. The limit as we approach infinity of x times the cosine of 1 over x. Change about this. Just the negative 